Well, hey everybody, and welcome to our online worship service today. We're so glad that you've decided to make this service a part of your day whenever you might be watching it. My name is Josh Erickson, and I'm one of the pastors of Park Ridge Presbyterian Church, and I'm so grateful that I have this chance to welcome you to our online service. Well, our online service today will include a time of prayer, we'll have some music, and I'll be offering a message that'll be aiming to help you have the best Thanksgiving and Christmas with your family ever. And how we're going to do that is to make sure we understand how to relate to each other the best we can. Well, again, thanks for joining us for this service, and we hope our time together is a blessing to you. You are not hidden. There's never been a moment you were forgotten. You are not hopeless. Though you have been broken, you're innocent, stolen. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. Over the next few months, we are all going to be getting together with our friends and family for many kinds of gatherings. We've got Thanksgiving very close, of course, coming up, and then into Christmas. And one of the things that is so great about Thanksgiving and Christmas season is that we get to spend time with our families. Now, the reality is, for some of us, spending time with our families is a wonderful thing. But for others, spending time with our family can be really stressful. Really stressful because we disagree about things. Really stressful because we have different politics. Really 
stressful because we have different opinions about what the right kind of Thanksgiving food is supposed to be and whether you're supposed to have fresh cranberries or canned cranberries, and that can be a real stressor for people, of course. And so what we need to do is make sure that we are ready for these family gatherings. Now, it's different than when we get together with our friends, right? Because we pick our friends, and sometimes our friends pick us based on college or whatever, but oftentimes our friends have, we have more in common with because that's what binds us together. But our family, we don't get to pick. And sometimes that puts us at the same table with people who see the world very differently from us. Now, in order to have a healthy and faithful and happy series of holiday gatherings, I want to encourage you to think about a way that you can see the people around the table with compassion, with patience, and humility. And when you do that, it'll help you have the best Thanksgiving and Christmas gatherings you can have. Now here's how I want to recommend you do this. There's a phenomenon called the overview effect that can help us get a better sense of how similar we are actually to one another. Now, the overview effect is something that happens for people when they go into outer space. And I'm serious right now, by the way. They call this the overview effect. And what happens is when you get into orbit, you are able to see the entire Earth at once. You're able to see everything from such a perspective that you see how common we are. How much every single human being has more in common than what we think separates us. Because you get a perspective where you see the whole earth at once, but you also see how small the earth is in comparison to the galaxy, in comparison to the infiniteness of space. And this overview effect is something that astronauts describe and how it changes their perspective on everything how it helps them to understand that there's more in common that separates people from one another, and how important it is to love one another, to have humility and patience and grace towards other people in the pursuit of what really matters most, which is the future that is a promise to all of us if we can pursue it together. Now, maybe you're going to go on the Blue Origins ride with Jeff Bezos or on SpaceX with Tesla. I'm not sure that I'm going to be doing that anytime soon. And so there's another way that we can get into that overview effect, which is to realize that every single person in our lives and in this world is a child of God. To recognize that when we see the thing that binds us together is that God loves us and that we are loved by God, that can also help us have this kind of overview effect that can help us see there is more that makes us in common than there is that separates us. And when we can do that, when we can remember that the person sitting next to us or across from us that might have different politics, might have a different faith, might have a different view of what is going to get us to the future, when we can remember that they are a child of God, that they are loved by God, that that can help us to love them that can help us to bring peace into the moment, and that can help us to have humility when we relate to people that have different beliefs than us. Now, this sounds like a good thing, I hope, for all of us, but I want you to know that if you're a follower of Jesus, that doing this, having this kind of overview effect where we can see everybody as a child of God, it's not optional for people who are followers of Jesus. It is actually literally what God wants us to do with everyone, but especially with those closest to us is to make sure that we see them as children of God. To make sure that we understand because God loves them, we are called to love them as well. And so when we remember this is not optional for followers of Jesus, it helps us to have a clue of how important this is. It also helps us to have a better sense of why it's so important to approach people with a sense of humility and patience and grace. Why we want to have compassion and kindness for them as well. When we go to the table, when we come to holiday gatherings, when we have that as our core, then we can really embrace people even if they're different than us. Now those values of kindness and compassion and humility and patience, those are the kinds of attributes that want to fill us as we embrace people who are different than us. These are the kinds of things that Paul writes about in his letter to the Colossians. Now, we need to remember that the letter to the Colossians was written to these people who lived in a place called Colossae. These were real people that had real problems. And they were trying to understand how could they love people who were different from them. And what Paul reminds them is that they are to love them because God loves these people too. 
They're to understand that because there is a renewal in their lives, that they can see that there isn't a difference that should keep them from the other people. What, specifically what Paul says to them is because there's no barbarian or Scythian, that's like a, a way of understanding some groupings of people, that there's neither slave nor free, that, they're all, that we are all one in Christ, that we have no option but to love other people but also to do it in a way that brings those values of humility and patience and kindness to the foreground as we relate to those around us. Now, Paul believes that this is possible because we have been renewed by Christ. If you're a follower of Jesus, that means that you are seeking the renewal of Christ and that you've been renewed by Christ. That means that the love of God is in you and you are trying to bring that love to other people. And because that renewal is in you, we have a sense of how God wants us to live, how we want to move towards the other people. So we cannot wait for the other people to move towards us in this way, but we can definitely move towards them. Remember, it's not up to you to see what they're going to do. It's up to you to see what you're going to do. And you always, we always can move towards others and move towards them with humility and with patience and with grace. And think about that. When you add all that together, when you remember that you are called to see people as children of God, to see people as those who are loved by God, that elevates us into that place where we see how similar we are. And yet also, then, if we decide that we're going to approach people with grace and patience and humility, then we're going to come towards them with hands open. We're going to come towards them with a way to embrace them, as opposed to thinking that we're going to put up barriers because there's some false difference between us. And when we move in that way, we're going to bring love into all these places. We're going to have, really, I believe, the best Thanksgiving and Christmas gatherings that we can have. Now, if we do this, we'll be moving towards people and having love go ahead of us. And when we do that, we've done our part. Now, remember that if you do your part and they don't do theirs, that doesn't mean you have failed to do what you need to do. It means that you've done what you're called to do. And they have to reciprocate and come towards you as well. Now, it might be true that you will do all this for someone and then you'll find yourself where they don't move towards you. And that, that's just the reality of how it is. But remember that there's other people watching you. Oftentimes, we might feel ourselves at odds with an individual family or a segment of our family, right? But but for most of us, there's other people watching, isn't there? And you don't do this because other people are watching, but you do this because God wants you to. But also along the way, we're also going to show an example to the other people in our lives. What it means for us to have faith that changes us, faith that makes a difference, faith that renews us. Because we all know what happens, right? When we take the high road, when we embrace the the overview of life, what happens when we show love and patience and humility and sometimes deference to those people in our lives? What do family members, what do friends say to us? I don't know how you do that. Isn't that what they say? I don't know how you put up with him. I don't know how you put up with her. Man, if I was you and they were saying that stuff, I could just never hold back. And if you can say to them, well, it's my faith that helps me do that, then you have not only witnessed to your family member in love, but you've witnessed to everybody who's there in love that you have a faith that's changed you. You you have a faith that has renewed you and that you are wanting to have relationships with people that are filled with that love and filled with that peace and filled with humility. And think about how transformative that will be for you and for everyone who's there. Now, it may be like simplistic or it may be, you know, wishful thinking uh, as you hear these things. But what do we know? What changes people? Love changes people. Love changes the way we relate to people. Love changes the way that we see other people. And when we remember that everyone around a table is a beloved child of God that can help us love them as best we can. So I know that every one of us wants to have wonderful holidays and wonderful Thanksgiving and Christmas gatherings. And so I want to encourage each one of us to do the best we can to remember 
that every single person is someone who is loved by God. And because they are loved by God, we are called to love them as best we can too. And to approach those moments with peace in our hearts. To approach those moments with humility and graciousness and compassion. And when we can do that, we will change the way we relate to everybody in our lives. And we'll change the way for the better of how we experience our family gatherings. God loves you and God wants you to love others. Let's remember that when we have our family gatherings in this time to come. Because when we do, we will have the best holidays we can. Now I invite you to join me for a time of prayer. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for the ways in which you are at work in our lives. We are so grateful that you have loved us and that you continue to love us, that you forgive us of our sins and that you go with us wherever we go. And God, in this season where we have so much to be grateful for and thankful for, God, we ask that you help us to be mindful of the way you call us to bring those blessings to others as well. Whether it's through the giving of our church or through partnership with service agencies or whether it's random opportunities, God, we ask that you help us to see and engage in those ways. God, help us to be faithful as we use all the gifts we have to help people experience your love and a beautiful life. God, we lift up to you those who are going to have struggles with their family and friends over the next few weeks in the holiday, Thanksgiving, and Christmas season. And we ask that you give a sense of your peace to them so that they can have healthy and faithful times with their family. God, we also lift up to you those who are in need at this time. We think of those who will struggle with food and housing and warmness in the winter. We think of those who continue to struggle with mental health issues at this time as well. And we know in the holiday season, things can go from being normal to difficult in a, just a moment for people. And we lift up those cycles and we lift up those struggles to you. God, we thank you that you are with us wherever we go. And we thank you that you hear our prayers. And we lift up all these prayers to you through your son, Jesus. Amen. Well, thanks again for joining us for our online service. We do really hope that our time together has been a blessing to you. And we hope that you'll join us again next week for our online service or that you'll consider joining us sometime in person. Please do be in touch with us if there's anything we can do to help you. And please know that we are praying for you. We'll know that we are here for you and want to help you in any way we can. And we really do hope you'll join us again next week.